Hi, Sahid. Hi, audience. Hi, Hi everyone. So today I have with me Dr. Sahid Chawa, and uh, he is one of our topper who has achieved his branch. So let him introduce himself. So Sahid, on to you. So tell the audience what you wanted to be and how are you feeling when you have got the rank and what rank have you got? Um, sir, I actually wanted to be a vascular surgeon from the beginning itself. I mean, um, we didn't have any exposure to cardiac surgery or vascular surgery in our um, PD, basically. In my uh, 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 college, when I was doing my PD, it was JDM down there. So they, uh, we didn't have rotations in cardiac surgery or in vascular surgery. But after coming out, I'd, uh, I'd uh, worked in a corporate hospital in a vascular surgery department as a senior resident. So um, there I got to see a lot of cases. And then um, so, um, we got to do a thoracoabdominal aortic aneurysm. And it was a pretty long surgery. I mean, um, there were uh, two vascular surgeons and uh, it went on for eight hours. Uh, eight to twelve hours. But the, and, adrenaline, but the adrenaline pump is so high that uh, you don't get tired. Definitely, of it. Sir. definitely. And uh, the vascular anastomosis uh, to the aorta. I mean, the aorta was pretty uh, badly damaged, and the aneurysm was so big it was not uh, amenable to endovascular uh, stenting or any of uh, the endovascular procedures. It had to it, it had to be an open procedure, so the aorta was clamped and then it was opened. The embolus was taken out, and then uh, all the branches were um, um, separated, tied off, and then the uh, anastomosis was done. And then the aortic um, uh, adventitia was closed over it over the uh, graft. So it was a very interesting surgery, sir. It was actually the game changing then, point. Yeah, that was a game changing point that you decided. No, I also want to win those shoes. Yes, sir. Yes. And uh, even uh, small EV fistulas that they do for uh, access for dialysis. I mean, joining an artery and a vein um, at the level of the wrist or at the elbow or wherever possible. I mean, they do the um, ultrasound by themselves and uh, I found that uh, to be uh, very interesting. Doing a vascular anastomosis was very interesting. And after that, I worked in a plastic surgery department so in a cancer hospital. So, uh, usually after head and neck surgeries, after they, they do a radical neck dissection or a uh, hemimandibulectomy, there is a lot of uh, reconstruction that is needed. And uh, I was lucky enough to be in a center where uh, they used to do free flaps. Okay. So they used to take uh, tish the tissue with... Not many, centers own, uh, are, not many centers are doing free flap. Most of them prefer to do a yes, double sir. flap. Yeah. Because that's yes. a time consuming also, and then th that's a risk that you have to take on yourself. Yeah, because the, yes, flap, yes, the microvascular anastomosis goes wrong, then everything is wrong, basically. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And under the microscope, when they were operating and then um, doing the vascular uh, anastomosis, I mean, even that was uh, amazing to assist in and uh, look at um, uh, the uh, plastic surgeon. He's kind of a friend and a really good mentor. So Sait, your uh, so uh, story is just like an inspiration. You, your story is just like an inspiration to all the, you can say, young surgeons who wanted or who want to be a cardiothoracic and vascular surgeon, but they refrain because yes, it's a tough branch, a bit tough branch. You need a lot of, you can say, uh, endurance and patience, both you need because these surgeries are not like yes, lab polycystectomy that will finish or lab appendix that will finish in 15, 20 minutes. So, uh, yes, Sahid, yes, all the yes. all the best for your future. But I want you to show light to or help to the coming or the budding surgeons. So, I want to ask, how did you approach the SS category? So, there were two three points when the students were a lot demotivated because you must be preparing for your CTVS, and then you came to know that there would be a single exam on general surgery, and then all of a sudden 
Yes. There was a change of pattern, yes. and then at the last moment again there was a change of pattern. So I want two things. First of all, yes, sir. You started with the preparation. Who was helping you in this journey, and then how did you cope up with that time? Um, sir, actually from the beginning itself, uh, I started my preparation probably six months uh, prior to the uh, exam date, and. Uh, uh there was uh, uh there were no peers actually i didn't have anybody to uh, uh um do a group study with or uh, anybody to talk to about uh, my doubts or anything of that sort and this year it has been uh, very convoluted sir as you have said uh because of the uh, pandemic exam got delayed the exam was supposed to have happened in um, uh, June or July of la- last year, and it got pushed to January of 2022. And then there was a syllabus change. First, they said uh, they were going to ask 150 questions from general surgery. So I started uh, reading reading from Bailey and Love and Savistin. I started uh, doing everything that I could to. Um, so what get, uh, what rank did you secure? Uh, Twenty, sir. That's great. That's awesome. So what was the sources of your uh, you can say uh, knowledge? Basically, what are the did you take any uh, help of the study materials? What all that you help and how did Preplatter help you in this preparation? Sir, uh, actually, reading from textbooks. And then Preplatter helped me a lot, sir, because I have taken the general surgery package. There was no separate package for uh, cardiac cardiac surgery or vascular surgery. So in general surgery itself, uh, I felt that cardiac surgery was covered in uh, a great depth, especially by Dr. Uh, uh, what is that sort of? He was actually really great. His lectures were really great, and uh, especially, sir, um, I loved your lectures. The general surgery part, I mean, um, I had to, you know, keep going through all of them one by one. What I used to do was, I used to read from the textbook, then I used to uh, go through your lectures, and after that, I used to answer question banks. From the same topic, so I used to answer around uh, 400 to 500 questions a day, and uh, I used to have them corrected by my uh, family members, okay. my wife in particular, and um, she's a MD general medicine. So she finished uh, four years back, and she is now a consultant, consultant physician, and a she has physician. played a lot. She has been a lot of motivation, I think. Yeah. So she has been a definitely, sir. That's great. That's yes, fun. definitely. That that I think that helped you cope up with a lot of stress because post MS we are uh, always confused. Ki shall we start with the career now with as a journal surgeon or shall I opt for MCH and super speciality? So this is always a fix. So yes, sir, definitely. But uh, for me, um, I've uh, had this lucky. Um, I had uh, luck in this um, uh, regard, sir, because I didn't have to support my family. My parents were very supportive. They wanted me to uh, uh, do my MCH, and uh, there was no pressure on me to, you know, uh, work uh, in a hospital and uh, provide for the family, nothing of that sort. So I could concentrate on my studies for uh, however long I needed to. Sahid, uh, you were working as a SR and most of the people yes, who are preparing for the SS, they're also preparing. So what should be the ideal plan of, you can say, or what should be the ideal strategy when you want to mix work and preparation? Because there are a lot of students who come up with a doubt Sir, I'm not able to uh, concentrate on my studies or I'm not getting time because I'm also working. So you have been through that phase and you have just come out successfully. So I want you to tell students how to cope up with that part. 
sir um, that part i think um, at least one month before the exam the uh, preparation should be complete from morning till evening but then before that even if you're working at least uh, take four hours of, of your time uh, and uh, keep it aside for your preparation so that you know um, when you read from your textbook and then watch videos take notes and then um, go through a question bank like uh, the uh, prithish singh or uh, surgery fixer there are so many question banks out there for general surgery so did you use uh, the preplanner question bank did you use those questions? i did sir i did and uh, it it didn't help me out a lot we had uh, i mean uh, yeah 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 your, your videos were actually um, a moral booster sir because uh, what we as aspirants feel is that um, even after reading a topic i mean uh, if i um, learned about intestinal obstruction or if i uh, watched videos on neurosurgery and uh, read you know the from sabiston and bailey and love uh, maybe two weeks back and after that i'm going on to urology i feel like i've forgotten uh, neurosurgery so what happens there is um, uh, there is this sort of um, a confusion that um you don't know if you'll remember what you have read but then it's all a mess it comes back in the end when you uh, appear for the exam so it does come back in the end so said uh, what are you planning now where are you joining as a, a cardiothoracic resident where are you joining so any plans now uh not now sir uh, because the counseling is um uh, and I, i expect the counseling to be start, uh, uh, i expect them to start counseling within a week no oh, so you must If have they, made you think that you want these 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 institutes so anything like no. um yes sir um there's a great uh, vascular surgery program in cmc vellore christian mercy college vellore and then uh, I've done my uh, undergraduate from uh, Sri Ramchandra Medical College, Chennai. So they too have a great vascular surgery program, and uh, Madras Medical College has a good uh, vascular surgery program. But the number of MCH seats are uh, very low, sir. In uh, especially in vascular surgery. Yeah, that's that's, and you will also have to see where the vascular surgery part is more, because majority of the places CABG etc. wall replacement there there but vascular surgery aneurysms etc yes you have to see where the case code because you have your particular inclination towards that so any um, so yeah the yeah. thing is i'm um, uh, not planning on joining um, mch uh, cardiovascular and thoracic surgery you are just doing i want to join mch vascular yeah. surgery peripheral vascular surgery Okay, okay okay so that is what i meant by the seat number of seats are very low oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. There, there is a separate mph yeah uh, yeah, 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 yeah yeah that's a separate we have very low seats and and that very uh, few places only okay yes so, sir any message for the any message for the surgeons those who are actually um i would uh, tell them to uh, prepare hard because from next year onwards uh, the from the next exam onwards the pattern is going to change so as uh, we cannot definitely say what is going to be uh, pg exit level uh, there is no demarcation any question can be asked from any speciality so i don't know how they are going to divide the paper in uh, 150 questions uh they might be asking uh, questions from uh, cardiac surgery urology plastic surgery general surgery um so firstly um uh, i would advise students to be thorough with uh, bailey and love and after that sabiston and then go on to specific uh, specialties important points in important chapters and specific uh, specific uh, 
specialities okay that is what i feel sir so uh, once again thankful to dr sahit sahit for sharing his uh, you can say wisdom and uh, once again i congratulate okay. and i wish for your bright future so thank you for sharing this platform you are listening to dr saurabh dikshit and dr sahit chawa so we are secured rank 20 in vascular surgery so thank you everyone Thank you.